Hello and welcome to another edition of ProtoMet's First Impressions, where I give my thoughts on the first episode of any new Tokusatsu show. And today I'm giving my thoughts on the first episode of Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers, the newest entry in the Super Sentai series. And the first one to have uh, CGI Rangers, as it turns out. One of which actually shows up in this episode, but I'll get to that soon enough. I've mostly been trying to avoid a lot of the media relating to the lead-up to this series. But, of course, I did find, discover that uh, two of the Rangers of this season are rendered using CGI. But only one of them shows up in this episode. Uh, so let's talk about the episode proper. It features a cameo from Zenkaiser from the previous season for some reason. I'm actually not sure what that reason is, but uh, they definitely make it a point to show that he is present <laughs> in a number of scenes. I'm kind of interested to see what he's doing here, considering that the last time we saw him, he was exploring the multiverse of sorts. But, yeah. But, uh, again, we're talking about Don Brothers, not Zenkaiger. <laughs> so, this episode starts with basically the opening for the story of Momotaro, which, if you've never heard, uh, an old couple uh, find a, a large peach in a river, and it opens up, and there's a baby inside. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much what we got here, except instead of an old couple, it's some dude who finds some mechanical-looking peach, to be honest, that opens up to reveal a baby. So, so cl clearly, this series is going to have uh, Momotaro inspirations behind it, as evidenced by basically the lineup of Rangers for this season. I mean, the Red Ranger of this season just is Momotaro. It's just Momotaro, so. <laughs> I mean, we we barely get introduced to him as a character outside of a couple scenes in this episode. Uh, interestingly, or at least I found it rather interesting, this episode, instead of focusing on how the, the rangers became rangers or establishing that all the rangers have, have their powers already and thus trying to establish all the characters or at least introduce them, we're basically told this episode from the perspective of the show's Yellow Ranger, who previous to this episode was not a Yellow Ranger. In fact, she was an aspiring manga artist who had recently gotten an award for being the youngest uh, manga artist to get this award. It was a huge news at her school. <laughs> and there was one guy who was kind of a dick about it. <laughs> Uh, they think they nickname him Yapo, and he becomes a bit relevant later on, but he's a jerk. <laughs> like, everybody's celebrating this girl Haruka's uh, award, and he's a wet blanket <laughs> about it for some reason. Like, for a good chunk of this episode, I thought that maybe he was also a manga author. Maybe everybody in this school has, like, manga author aspirations or something. Doesn't seem to be the case, because turns out he's actually in the table tennis club or something, along with Haruka's boyfriend. <laughs> I forget his name. He's not super relevant. But, um, soon after leaving school, she, uh, some... I guess app on her phone just kind of downloads itself and starts up and gives her a slot machine with like triple eyes and it's creepy uh, especially for her but uh, it does give her glasses that basically allow her to recreate They Live a movie I've never seen but which I understand the premise of <laughs> and I do mean <laughs> they, gi they give her the ability to relive the premise of that movie because she turns them on and everything around here looks drastically different. Things look overlaid. It's a, it's a really odd, but very artistically inclined 
overlaying of like colored lines all over just about everything. It makes things kind of blurry, but in a kind of rainbow sort of way. And there are some things that are only present in this sunglasses vision, like structures in the sky. And turns out some people look like they're made of mixed paint. <laughs> Turns out these are the grunts for the season, and uh, I, I guess the, the idea is that the grunts for the season have basically integrated themselves into society for some pre reason. Of course, this happens after uh, Haruka has an encounter with a monster who tries to offer only for her to be saved by some dude wearing blue with glowing blue eyes, it looks like. <laughs> He's got a very blue, blue, blue is his primary color, obviously, and he transforms and kills the monster, but he's not a ranger. You might think he's a ranger or some other hero if this were any other tokusatsu show, but it's kind of clear that considering that he doesn't have a ranger look to him, he's probably the bad guy. <laughs> that much seems obvious. And... Anyway, after Haruka gets the glasses, she ends up running or being chased around town by the grunts who realize that she's she can see what they really are. And this results in a kind of interesting chase scene where she ends up activating a, a spring on the ground, which launches her up to the top of a building, which then leads her to a bridge between a couple buildings that the grunts who are chasing her end up destroying as she's as she's crossing it and oh it's a visual spectacle to be sure and she somehow winds up in this area with some dude in a prison i'm pretty i'm pretty sure it's the guy who found the peach at the beginning of the episode who basically tells her to find some guy named momo itaro which obviously is momo taro but Find him and swear fealty, bow before him and swear fealty to him. Which is weird. <laughs> By this point, she's actually uh, gotten her hands on a gun with, like, a buzzsaw-like gear, which is very reminiscent of the previous season Zenkaiser, which, of course, I'm bringing up again. Because, <clears throat> but this allows her to transform into the Yellow Ranger Oni sister, which, all right. First, trans first actual transformation of this of the scene is the soul, fe soul the soul female of the ranger team, unless the sixth ranger turns out to also be female. Because I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but after she manages to escape from the grunts for this season, the paint people, and encounter this one weird dude, she uh, winds up encountering a spate of bad luck <laughs> as. Turns out she's being she's being accused of plagiarizing another manga. With the, it's ter somebody is accusing her of plagiarizing their manga with her award-winning manga. And to be honest, for quite a bit of the episode, I assumed that it was that Yapo guy. But turns out he's a table tennis guy, so I have no idea what's going on with that. But it results in everybody in her class ostracizing her and her boyfriend dumping her because her, because his mommy doesn't want want him dating a thief. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I said that and that uh, that just reminds me of a uh, that just reminds me of Nin injury. <laughs> But anyway, so things are weird for Haruka right now because she's just been accused of plagiarism and there's proof. <laughs> so she doesn't know what to do. She, As far as the audience is aware, she hasn't actually committed plagiarism and something weird is going on. We don't know why she's, <laughs> why this is happening and this episode doesn't give us any resolution to that. It kind of just presents itself as a plot point and then kind of goes away from that plot point for a bit. Because now Yapo has been turned into a monster with like a nail covered ping pong paddle. 
and he's going around challenging just about anybody. He, he challenges Haruka's ex and uh, leaves him with a nasty welt on his face. <laughs> he challenges some guy from another school and um, <laughs> uh, smashes a ping pong ball through a, his uh, dinner tray because he was at lunch <laughs> and leaves him on leaves him out. He challenges a, a gold medal winning athlete in the field with what is basically a broken billboard and some pieces of wood. And he just starts launching like black, I'm assuming metal clusters of ping pong balls at everybody. And at about this point, uh, Haruka transforms again. Because she's present at this point, but then we also get introduced to this other guy who transforms into the Pink Ranger of the season, which, uh, n nice that for once we actually get a male Pink Ranger and it's part of the mainline series and not some other spin-off or something. Or like a, a, a form change <laughs> sort of deal. It's nice that, also this is uh, one of the two CGI characters <laughs> for this core team. And he is tall. <laughs> and admittedly, the only way uh, <laughs> they could have gotten the proportions for this guy was to go with CGI. Or to just have him be regular cell animation. But I think the CGI looks a bit better. It wouldn't Having him be cell animated would have probably clashed <laughs> with the art style of the rest of the show. But uh, before he shows up, uh, the blue guy that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Haruka had, had previous had the blue guy who saved Haruka from the monster before shows up, and she thinks that he's Momoe Taro because she thinks he's a hero, uh, just like in the manga she wrote. So she bows down and swears fealty to him, but he has no idea what she's talking about, and he just transforms into his blue monster form and just straight up. Well, at, the, at some point, Yapo has transformed into a monster himself, and this blue guy just kills him. Just kill. Do, doesn't save him from because doesn't tra change him back from being a, into a human from being a monster. He just kills the monster <laughs> in cold blood, and then he gives the gold medal ping pong guy who is being attacked the ability to transform into a monster, and then leaves. And I think by, by around this point, the, the Pink Ranger has shown up and is fighting the monsters. It, it, it's pretty chaotic. Then the Red Ranger shows up, and uh, he gets a pretty good, uh, see, he gets a good bike chase scene. He, he gets introduced by being brought in on, oh god, what are they, what are they called? <laughs> like, they have them at, like, festivals <laughs> over in Japan. Where they have a bunch of people holding it up. Uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, I don't, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, but it's the kind of stuff that you see, like royalty be, being carried around on the shoulders of his servants, in like old media <laughs> like period period media media that is it's like right on the tip of my tongue I'm not gonna worry about it too much but there's like a lot of maidens all around Kit here in the thing so he joins the fray um, it's a crazy introduction <laughs> Uh, he summons a motorcycle <laughs> using, I want to say, he, he at one point uses uh, a Zenkaiser gear to transform into Zenkaiser. He brought up again. Uh, and then he uses his motorcycle to, te to basically chase after the monster and bring it to some, like, uh, other world <laughs> where... The motorcycle then is joined by. I want to. I want to say it's Zuran from 
from Zenkaiger, only without any personality, who just kind of is brought in to, in his big mecha form, to m m fuse with the motorcycle into basically a Zenkaiger combination, which I, I feel that's weird. Like, they, they had that last season. Why are they bringing it back again? Did they, did they, do they not have enough ideas? Also, the entire reason that uh, Zuran has shown up is because the now monochromatic Zenkaiser has shown up and has used a, a Sentai gear to summon him. Uh, weird? Again, Z Zenkaiser shows up in this episode. He showed up earlier in the scene where Haruka does uh, get that phone app that does the eye things and gives her the sunglasses. And he just kind of shows up. Ooh. Like, he's there seemingly menace, uh, ominously. Like, Zenkaiser's, Zenkaiser's whole presence in this episode feels kind of ominous, even when he's being helpful. But anyway, anyway the Red Ranger of this season fuses with one of the mechas from last season in a combination that is ripped straight out of last season, and they managed to defeat the monster who had been wreaking havoc in this virtual world, which was also wreaking havoc in the real world. <laughs> and then the episode just kind of ends, and Haruka is left wondering who Momo Itaro is, because she doesn't think it's the Red Ranger. Um, at one point, we do get introduced to Momo Itaro proper, when he's delivering a package to... A guy studying for a law school who is utterly demotivated, and by the time Momoi leaves, that guy has uh, regained all of his motivation. And this guy goes on about bonds and stuff. <laughs> At one point, he encounters Haruka and claims that they've established a bond, and his whole deal is about bonds, I guess. It's, he's all philosophical, but also weird, and I, I'm kind of with Haruka. I was like, really? This guy? Who, who is this guy? This guy's weird. But she's left wondering, who is Momo Itaro? Because she also encounters an old man who goes by the name of Momo Itaro. And it's probably not him, because he's clearly a gag character. But at one point, even, even a dog named Taro gets confused for <laughs> Haruka trying to figure out who she's supposed to find. <laughs> and that's where the episode ends. And so many questions. And I'm certainly interested in watching more to find out what is going on with this series. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> De definitely, definitely leaving a lot of questions that need to be answered in subsequent watching. So I'm definitely going to keep watching. I want to know just what's all going on. Because this episode doesn't do very much to actually establish what's actually happening. And I kind of like that. I, I kind of feel that that's... Something that helps this first episode of a Sentai season stand out. Usually the first episode is explaining the situation. Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? What are the bad guys' motivations? What are they after? How did the Rangers get their powers? Have they always had their powers? And this, ad, this, leave, this episode just leaves me with so many questions that I would like answers for. Which is why I'm going to keep watching it. I, re I recommend you guys give this a watch. It's quite intriguing. And certainly not anything I was expecting from this season. I mean, there are some things that I kind of wish had been done differently. Or at least hope that they will be done differently in the future. But for right now, I'm certainly interested in finding out just what's going on. So, until next time, this has been me, Proto Man. See ya.